Okay, Regina Rahim, thank you for talking to me. Um, I thought it was interesting to talk to you this year because obviously you've got very interesting investing and um, objectives, uh, goals this year. Uh, I'll leave it to you to, to tell me what you've got uh, planned in terms of investing in, in 2020, 2021. Right. Morning, uh, Chong, and uh, thank you for having me on Do More. And, um, you know, I like your tagline about how uh, life is short. Um, I have to disagree. I think, uh, you know, you know the, the, the number of years that we're living uh, is irrelevant. It's, uh, you know, we have people living to over 100 years old now, and then, um, but if you don't do anything with it, it's uh, pretty much a waste of time, right? So, anyway, yeah, uh, what am I doing this year? Um, basically, I'm decided, I've decided to um, invest in myself, so not so much about the money, but it's all uh, to do with uh, people and myself, and uh, it's all in terms of personal growth. Um, the journey actually started a lot longer than uh, the New Year's resolution uh, for 2021. Um, actually started back in 2019, um, as I was looking to figure out what was my next phase of life after uh, you know, retirement as such, you know, um, so, and it got me thinking, um, you know, what, what is it that I really want to do? And uh, that got me seeking, uh, trying to figure out what my skills were. And that's when I thought, okay, um, I really enjoy mentoring and coaching. And uh, what was really great about mentoring and coaching is that you could actually see uh, the real impact uh, you actually have on someone else, right? Um, so I thought, uh, you know, let me try and figure out more about this. So I got myself certified uh, properly last year uh, amidst the madness of COVID-19. And so that was a very, very interesting journey. And I just thought that just like, you know, going to school, you get your certification and all that. But it's been a real um, journey of self-discovery. Um, and I, I guess it came um, about at a really timely uh, period of my life in the sense that uh, it was also the fact that uh, my youngest was leaving for university last year, late last year. So, and it was also, uh, so it was a, a major period of change for me. Uh, and so, you know, so it's, so it's interesting to note that, uh, you know, I've just recently read this book by Dr. Joe Dispenza and they talk about how experience without knowledge is basically mere philosophy um, and uh, knowledge without experience is ignorance. So, so it's actually very interesting in that sense because you know you think about you go through your life and especially as you approach uh, the the your you know as I'm approaching my 50s as such you know so um, you know you think a lot of people are quite comfortable and I guess and that's what's quite scary for me. I, I, I don't like being comfortable. I wanted to do a lot more. And so, which is why I thought, uh, you know, actually investing in myself, you know, actually really making sure that it's not just the physical health bit. Okay, that one's pretty easy because then, you know, you just take care of your diet, you do your exercise and all that. But there's always that mental bit that people tend to ignore. And I think COVID-19 actually brings this to the fore, right? Because you're thinking, okay, um, uh, you know, most of us who are fortunate enough to have a job, uh, working from home and all that, but it's all very different, right? Um, obviously, I don't have kids, uh, you know, screaming while I'm working from home. But that situation is very, very different even within people who do have jobs, you know. Uh, so I think I was very mindful of that, which is why part of the reason why about two weeks ago I decided to post my social media and uh, actually offer free coaching. So um, I had an overwhelming response. I posted it on Instagram, Facebook and um, LinkedIn. And I decided to actually go towards, uh, move towards more LinkedIn uh, candidates because it was really interesting because you actually had a lot of, um, I noticed a lot more millennials were very, very keen to take it up. And, uh, and I also noticed over the years, as, as I've been mentoring people, 
it's it's the millennials the younger generation who are actually really really keen to make an impact so so they're not actually just leaving their life and just winging it and i think our generation actually uh, you know we're very guilty of winging things and you know not actually planning for anything right and if we're if we do well in life well good for us but the younger generation they're not they really know what they want and it's actually very refreshing to see that at very young ages, even in their 20s and 30s, that they know that there's something wrong with them or they've got limiting beliefs that they can do a lot more, uh, not just for themselves, but, uh, you know, uh, basically their, their whole life ecology. That so, so that's, you know, I think this is something that, you know, our generation can actually um, learn from because technically, you know, I think, uh, you know, a lot of what's happening in the world is also part of the the, the indifference that we that we actually do. I love the fact that you are not allowing yourself to go into a comfort zone. Um, that would put you in the, you know, in the minority for people of, um, you know, um, who have been working in the corporate world for the last 20, 30 years or whatever, right? Um, and, and I saw your posting on LinkedIn, so henceforth why I got in touch with you. I thought it was fantastic. What are you doing? Um, what, what kind of leadership lessons would you, you know, would you pose? Would you provide for people? Well, I think I think it's a it's a matter of um, a sense of empowerment that we're looking at, right? Because I think most most people when they talk about leadership, they just think, okay, you know, I want a title or something like that. But that's not it. I think in the last, uh, you know, especially in the last fifteen years. Uh, when I'm, you know, working for Nomura, I've realized really that technically there is a massive difference between being a boss and being a leader, right? So you've really got to walk the talk. And so a lot of people come up to me and they can even be quite senior. I've even had uh, some of the mentees I've had over the years was actually uh, people who are actually quite close to retirement and they're trying to figure out what they want, right? So it's all about, uh, uh, you know, empowerment. So it's not so much to say that, okay, I'm going to, you know, uh, coach you to become the next C-suite. If that's what you want, great. But it's also sometimes it's just a matter of, you know, gaining com confidence and trying to really, you know, realize that management is not about just purely uh, numbers or anything like that. It's actually a lot to do with managing people and having that sense of empathy, right? So, for instance, in working from home, um, how many how many corporate bosses can actually say that, apart from checking in, um, are they sensitive enough to the fact that you know some people might have uh, relationship issues, uh, or just purely uh, you know the demands of parenthood that's actually making them, you know, find it a lot harder that you can't be at your desk nine to five and it's got to actually be a bit more flexible and as long as the work is done uh, that's what you should be looking at rather than you know the little details of the fact that hey i can't get somebody at a particular point in time during the working hours right um so i think these are the little lessons that i do uh you know share uh with uh, my coaches as well as my mentees it's also the fact that uh about building self-confidence so i've noticed especially for women uh you know uh, a, a lot of them um have significant issues and a lot of questions are asked uh, were, were asked of me about how do i deal with uh, you know working with so many men etc and uh, my frank answer is the fact that for me i don't see myself as being female or male because at the end of the day when it's work why do you have to have a gender identity? Um, but clearly for a lot of women, it is an issue because it's also confidence, right? They don't like the fact that when people look at them and, and start judging how they, what they wear, uh, how they look and stuff like that. So I, so I think one of the ways that I also try and um, sort of coach people is that they've got to have that sense of inner confidence. So it doesn't have to come from external validation as such. So which means that also how they, they, they carry themselves, about how they dress. So because that as soon as they, they have that sense of inner confidence, then 
you know, you, you can already see that, they, you know, their presence changed significantly and, uh, you know, they're, 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 they're able to compete with, uh, with others uh, a lot more effectively. Do you think the concept, the idea of leadership is changing, evolving, not even subtly, but quite quickly in this COVID era? I, I think the COVID era has definitely changed. I mean, our whole model of reality has completely changed, right? All the belief systems that you had before and whatnot, uh, things are moving really rapidly. So, I mean, apart from working from home, it's also the fact that um, I know myself personally that my staff is expecting me to also, you know, tell them, okay, this is what we're expecting and whatnot. So it's, it's a lot more hands-on. Um, so, you know, we talk about in the investing world about in, impact investing, right? Uh, you know, climate change and stuff like that. And at the end of the day, these are actually very, very basic, uh, you know, um, you know, issues that, that affect our, everyone's ecology, right? Because if you don't have, you know, clean air, you don't have a house, you don't have a job and stuff like that, your, your, your basic needs are not being met. So which is why, you know, leaders really have to walk the talk. And I guess and that's, you know, that's why this, this whole gap about the Davids and Goliaths and, and, and uh, your GameStop and all that is also because people are saying you can't be saying one thing and doing another, right? It's and all the rules, your 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 standard of uh, you know SOPs and all that must be uh, you know uh, you know across the board, and that's why people are just really upset, right? And uh, you know I think you know it's quite quite true what you know some of this what 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 you're reading in the papers globally is that um, people have got to address that. You can't just be talking. And you know, uh, you know, commenting about things, uh, but you've really got to do something about it. And and uh, whether that's going to affect uh, democracy in the long run, I think, I think definitely, because if you've already got the democratization of investments, you've uh, why and and people are a lot more self-aware of what they want out of life, because you're living a lot longer. And no one wants to live a lot longer if it's going to be a painful, uh, long life. Uh, so you know they want to do more. They want they want more. So which is why that um, mental health issue actually is is very important. So it's how you treat people, right? Um, yeah, I think that would be that would be what I I think. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, parting shots, I guess, Regina. You know, obviously you've said a lot. What would be the three, you know, pearls of wisdom that you would impart to young people, um, you know, going forward? I don't know about pearls of wisdom, but uh, if I could live my life and, uh, you know, uh, you know, sort of turn back the time, I think the key thing that I would definitely tell my younger self would be to say, one, um, eat as much cake as you want. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, be fearless, you know, the thing is, uh, and why wait? Uh, you know, I think, I think a lot of us, when you go through life, you are very procedural. You're thinking, okay, I've got to get this, I've got to get a job, then i got to get married, then I've got to get have kids, I've got to have the car and the house, blah, blah, blah. But I think COVID era has basically shown that you don't need to do that. You can bypass a lot of things. So be fearless and, um, you know, grab, grab life uh, by the balls as such and, and see what you get, um, you know. Uh, if you don't try or you don't ask, you never know. And is there a third and most important thing? Uh, family, la. Family, whoever it is, whether it's you know, for kids or whatever, I think it's very important that you have that, uh, that uh, support, you know, family support. So, however it is, and obviously for me, it's my, my children. Yeah. It was a privilege chatting with you, Regina. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. All right. Thanks. Thank you. See ya.